section two. So on this Labor Day weekend, we look at how we labor together. The Apostle Paul makes it very clear that we make up the body of Christ. And if so, how does that work? We have the answers, although they are given us in the form of questions as, as to how we operate as that body. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do we all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? I think you can all interpret though. We know the answer to this clearly too. No, we do not all have the same gifts. Some of us teach. Some of us are liturgists. Where'd Phil go? She's here. There you are. Some of us organize and coordinate. Some of us have good financial skills. Some of us are leaders. Some of us are more comfortable offering hospitality. Some of us are good at fixing things or raising funds or capital. Some of us are comfortable offering public prayer. That, that's frightening for a lot of us. Some of us are good with children. Some of us are good with youth. Some of us are good at woodworking or artistic pursuits and such as singing and making music. And some of us are good at gardening. Some of us are good cooks and bakers, good at feeding one another. So look at us. We can do so many things and we truly do make up the body. So what happens then, you know where I'm going, if we have gifts and we choose not to share them? I'd say it seems a little stingy, doesn't it? And I can and do say this because our talents come from God. And if we are the body of Christ, then doesn't it follow that we would naturally share our gifts? You know, there were times when as a member of a church, me, I'm talking about me, this or that pastor would come alongside me and ask if I would volunteer at this or that other thing. And often I would think, um, I cannot possibly do that. If it was something small, I would likely say yes anyway. And if it was something bigger, such as organizing this coming year's women's retreat or being a leader of a committee, I would say, will you just let me think on that for a bit and I'll get back to you? But most of the time, I said yes. If my time allowed, even if it made my time a little bit squishier during the week, I would say yes. And I think I did this because I trusted my pastor to have a sense of my skills and talents. To have observed me within the congregation and maybe saw something I didn't yet sense a, have a sense of, of in myself yet. And as I said yes to more ways of being in the church, my sense of God grew in my life and of being a partner in the work of the church grew. And I grew and I changed in Christ. And by working alongside others who were committed to Christ, enough that they were there too, maybe on a random Sunday morning, organizing stacks of items for the great church rummage sale, or pulling chicken nuggets out of the oven for a church get together. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I have helped build a house a feat requiring more social savvy than I ever thought necessary, building with a team. And I learned, and I learned, and I learned. And I know we can all study the Bible on our own, and we ought to do, but I thought I would invite some people who have attended Bible study um, to tell us what they get out of group study. So I'm going to ask those people 
to share. David, are you, can you bring the microphone, please? Dorothy, do you want to go first? All right. Just for a minute. I, I don't mind being first. <laughs> and I wondered, because she asked, what do you get out of Sunday school? And I thought about it, and it's a very selfish thing. I enjoy it. I would rather be at Sunday school than any place else. That's why I'm here every Sunday. And what do I get out of it? I, I get a very good look at the Bible through somebody else's eyes. And that is wonderful. And I am so glad to be a member of this church where I can come to Sunday school. And when I decide to talk, everybody listens. That's really neat. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Dorothy. Since I'm close by, I'll <laughs> grab the mic. Because I was asked the same question. And I go there to see people like Dorothy and Elaine and all the people that show up for Sunday school. I enjoy their company thoroughly. I go there to learn how to be a better person, how to deal with the rest of my life during the week. And it's just a, a very joyful learning experience that I really don't want to miss. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we've been doing Bible study for well over 20 years. So you can imagine how many ministers have led us in those studies and, and are also the lay people as well. I think it's the variety of thought and what you learn from that thought about the Bible and the experiences which we've been uh, told about. It makes a Sunday experience for me. It makes a fuller day for me, and it gives me a better background as well. So what I heard people say, Dorothy said um, that she gets a look at the Bible through someone else's eyes. That's pretty, that's pretty important, especially to our sermon series. And Harry said a variety of thought. And did you mention being heard as well, Rosemary? That people are listening to the thoughts that you have. We don't get that very often. We don't get that opportunity. So I'm encouraging you to come to a Bible study. Maybe you're not ready to come every morning. Choose one. Maybe an Ad Advent Bible study. Maybe the Lenten Bible study. But come to Bible study just one and in order to make it um, to make it um, easier for more of you to take part in Bible study I have a new study beginning on Thursday evenings for four weeks it's a short study just to get your feet wet and its start time is 630 and if that seems too early talk to me about it I'd rather accommodate more of you than um, have you not attend because of a schedule conflict. So that, you'll find out all the particulars of that in the messenger, and if you don't have a messenger, give us a call and we'll give you the info. So the sermon title is Population 2. I think you can see where we're getting to. I think you can see what I'm getting at. The focus for this sermon series is widening our circle. And I thought maybe it would be a good idea if we broadened who we are first. And that can happen in any number of ways that we've touched on so far. By sharing our talents and by coming together to study God's word. And there's another way we come together, and that is in the practice of Holy Communion. And the fall Sunday morning study is a film study of Holy Communion where we'll explore the whys of this practice that we at the United Methodist Church come together and participate in once a month. 
So again, the study is compiled from the perspectives of a number of people who are in communion, small c, with different kinds of people and therefore see communion in varying ways. So like those today who shared with us their Bible study experiences. So we're expanding our perspectives, making the circle wider and making more room in the circle. And we're even moving into another church's circle. Our youth will be joining with Church on the Hills youth on Wednesday evening so we can enjoy the camaraderie and activities of a larger group of kids. Then we'll come together once a month to learn about Christianity from a United Methodist perspective or as we like to say, a Wesleyan perspective, that of our founder, John Wesley. So you might be waiting to hear me say this. We have much to celebrate in our church already. And I'm, I'm going to have David get up with the microphone and I'd like to invite people to say what it is that we can celebrate right now in what we're doing in our church. I think when I think it's a I think this is wonderful that we have that that we can share and I appreciate being a part of this family and the, those of us who are older have so many talents that that we want to share and give and we have a younger group coming in and we're so blessed to have those people join us and you cannot find a warmer place to be than right here so that's what I celebrate and I thank all of you for making my weeks pass so much easier when I you know deal with different struggles or celebrations it's wonderful to have a group of people this is my church family to celebrate with so thank you Myra? I think that we're very <clears throat> fortunate to be able to go to church and have our Bibles and do the things that God wants us to do toward bringing more people to Christ. And I think that we've got a lot of good things going on in the church. I was looking at the um, with the Sunday school set up this year and I have a special needs uh, well, I've had her, I had her for, oh, I don't know, 16 years. I got her when she was two, and she's like 26, 27. And I will bring her with me and come to Massey Church. And I think this is a really good start. And I think we have a lot to celebrate. Thanks, Myra. Rose, right beside Myra. I particularly am thankful that uh, the Methodist Church is participating in uh, the farmer's market and we're reaching a lot of people and with our um, conversations with them and being there and just our um, helping out the community. Thank you. I'm really thankful for the small group of people we have working like on Ag Council, trustees, you know, that see things get done around the church. I can only tell you that our um, outreach to the community through Gigi's Closet, in particular, Messy Church and Farmer's Market's been mentioned, and that is wonderful. But Gigi's Closet also is providing clothing. And I know the other day when we were open, we had two young girls in there. And my goodness, they're getting ready to take their CNA test so that they can work at the manor or in the hospital. And we had uniforms there for them. 
And uniforms anymore are quite pricey to buy those scrubs. So they were thrilled to death and were able to be outfitted for work, which is very important to them. And so, and we really have a good time. I will say this, it's kind of been on my heart. I hope that everyone knows you are welcome to come and help in anything that the church does as an outreach in ministry to one another. And because we are an aging church, we do understand that it's not always easy. But when only three people were available to load up heavy tables and a tent into a pickup truck, it gets to be kind of tiresome. We do it with an open mind and open heart, and we have fun. But you know what? Sometimes you get tuckered out. So anything that anybody can do to help us, any young people willing to volunteer in any of the things that we do, please, you are welcome, because we want to continue reaching out to our community and show them the love that is in this church. Love you all. And we have had a lot of help from Billy Joe and um, Kaylin and Carl and Adam in loading and unloading those tables every Thursday night. Yeah, yeah. Mike. I want to celebrate a community outreach which goes, I think, largely unseen. And I may be the only person that, that sees it. Brenda mentioned it last week in her sermon that people come to the church in need and they don't always get treated with dignity even at other churches so one of the things that i know this church does is is treat people who are in extreme situations with uh, dignity and gives them the opportunity to get a leg up and get on top of their situation uh, it also i see brenda go out at various hours of the day and night to provide counseling to people that have reached out to her to ask for help and guidance and uh, these are things that go on kind of in the background but they wouldn't happen if it wasn't for the church body uh, providing the, the support and the the institution of the church in order to do it yeah you make it happen Okay, I'll continue. Thank you, David. And thank you for everyone who, who spoke and celebrated. So as we make room for new things, we might decide some others have fulfilled their purpose, and we will celebrate them for what they have given, and then we might have to let them go. And there is a cycle in the life of the church just as there is in a human life. And oftentimes I hear people say, I don't want to be a part of a church team because I don't want to deal with politics or the pettiness that happens. And well, I say, welcome to the human race. Because <laughs> that's what we are here. We're bumbling, we're flawed, we're gifted, and as Wesleyans, we are a gracious people. We are. As one author says, Know your why. Know why you do what you do and cling to it above all the pettiness you no doubt will encounter every once in a while. Do that and keep yourself close to God. And remember this, if God is for us, who can be? You're good. So let's intentionally bump up our population quota. Maybe join with three or more as a working part of the body of Christ. Take a chance. Just take a chance. And I, I bet that someone will be there cheering you on the whole way. And I'm confident of that because I know the good people of this church. Amen.